Welcome to Alpha Cars. My name is Dimitri, and today we have a very interesting segment. We're going to show you uh, kind of how the air conditioning system works, and most importantly, if you have a vehicle and your air conditioning system does not blow cold air, definitely stay tuned because you're going to learn all about it and what you or your service technician would have to do to the vehicle to make it work really, really cool. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. We are also going to um, use a pretty cool vehicle for demonstration. A couple of reasons we're using this vehicle and it's called Saab 900 Turbo Convertible. So we just sold this car and uh, the air conditioning on this car was slightly weaker than you would expect. So we decided to really go through and overhaul the system and we will tell you all about it. So first of all, about the system. And if you're familiar with the components of the air conditioning system, you can skip through. If not, stay tuned because we're gonna talk about it. So we do have the engine here and don't be surprised the belts on the Saab are here because the engine on the Saab is kind of 180 degrees so the front of the engine the timing chain the belts are facing the firewall and the back of the engine where the transmission is the clutch is actually on the back of the engine transmission is under the engine and uh, so you can replace the clutch it's one of the very few uh, automobiles where you can replace the clutch and you don't have to remove the transmission. It is very, very cool. And since we're kind of on an overview, here is the uh, turbocharger. It doesn't get any simpler than that. You have exhaust, you have the turbocharger, you have the exhaust continues here, and then uh, we do have the uh, air intake and there's an intercooler right there, air filter, intercooler, and then it goes into the engine with the boost from the turbocharger. But the purpose of this video is air conditioning. I just have to explain why the air conditioning compressor is facing uh, the windshield and not the front of the vehicle. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, here's the air conditioning compressor, which is driven by the belt, which is in turn driven by the crankshaft pulley. So the air conditioning uh, compressor, you have two lines. Here is the a bigger line is a low pressure, the bigger meaning a larger diameter, and the thinner line is the high pressure. So we have that, and then the high pressure system, uh, high pressure is produced by the air conditioning compressor, then it makes its way to the receiver dryer, and then from the receiver dryer, it goes to the air conditioning evaporator. That's a really cool part. And the Saab is very special uh, in the design, and I think it is brilliant because what they did, they located this part in the easy to access place. Most of the time, uh, majority of these are located under the dash. So to get the access we have now, you'd have to remove the dashboard or do a substantial amount of disassembly. So, but before the high pressure makes its way into the um, evaporator. There is a little part here, and this is a new one, we're actually part of the overhaul, we are putting a new um, expansion valve. So what this does, it, um, it actually where the gas goes through the little orifice, and then it goes from the compressed state to a low pressure state, and it turns it into a really cool substance. And then it, that substance, is pushed through these lines and then there's a heat exchanger on the inside and then there's an air intake goes here and then it gets really cold and then makes its way to the uh, under dash duct work and then through the distribution system it makes its way to these vents that we're always looking forward to get that cold air from. Now 
there are a couple of things here without getting in too much detail, uh, but you don't want this thing to freeze because it may actually freeze up to the point that the ice builds up and the air cannot get through. So there's a little feedback, mechanical feedback system that will uh, control that. And it's, sometimes it's done mechanically, sometimes there is actually a temperature sensor that turns off AC compressor, but those are kind of uh, uh, just have peripheral systems. As far as principles of operations, and that's what this video is all about, uh, the low pressure uh, gas, and that would be originally was R12 Freon, and then R134, the system, uh, was converted to 134. So now the low pressure makes its way back into the compressor and then the cycle repeats itself. And if everything works normal, you got a really nice cold air coming out of your dashboard vents. And when you don't have that cold air, we need to dig in and figure out what's going on. So there are some simple tests we can do. We have this machine right here you can see. And with that machine, we have low pressure and we have high pressure gauges. Those are very simple and very, very important because by the parameters on those gauges, you can get a quick health check of the system. So for example, if your low pressure is too high and the high pressure doesn't build up, uh, there may be a restriction in the system. If your low pressure is way, way low and the high pressure doesn't build up, you may have low charge. So there are different things we do, and these are just a couple of examples. There are different things we do to get to the bottom of it. And as far as diagnostic principles, that could be a whole nother video. But as far as principles of operation and kind of uh, system overhaul, what we want to do, we want to make sure the expansion valve on an old vehicle is nice and clean. Uh, here is the old valve, and we actually could physically see some debris in there. You can see it, I'm not sure if you can see it, I can certainly see it right here, right in there. So we installed the new one, and then as you can see, we disconnected all the points, so we blew each hose to make sure it's free of any debris, we, uh, with low pressure, of course, we blew through the uh, evaporator. We blew through the condenser. We didn't talk about that, but because there's another part there that also in the uh, high pressure circuit, which basically cools off the compressed uh, gas, and that's part of the high pressure circuit. Low pressure circuit is pretty short. You can see it on this car, it makes its way from the evaporator right into inlet of the air compressor. And then from here, you can see the high pressure circuit that goes into receiver dryer and then goes into the uh, AC condenser, which is located in front of the radiator. It's not easy to see on this car. And then from there, it goes into the expansion valve right here. So now we covered all the components in the circuit. I forgot to mention the, uh, the condenser earlier. Of course, it is a critically important part. So now, when we have it all apart, we go through each hose, we inspect each hose to make sure it's flexible, it doesn't have any cracks, um, and uh, uh, then we blow through it. We changed all the O-rings, and uh, of course, you have to have some, you know, parts for that, so we have the O-ring kit, and you have to have access to technical information, which is super helpful, even on all the cars, so we have all that. And then you have to have proper adapters to connect to the, um, to the machine. So now, when we made sure uh, we have a free flow in the system, we're going to reconnect it all. We're gonna recharge the system according to specifications, and we certainly, um, we, we're certain it's gonna work nicely because 
Previously, uh, we made sure the compressor works and builds up pressure. That we knew there was restrictions in the system through the diagnostic steps. So we're looking forward to completing this work and get the AC working nice and cool. In the meantime, we thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Please consider sharing, subscribing, and please let us know which videos you like the best by simply clicking that like button. My name is Dimitri, and until next time.